Hello, this is Ron Clymer at Clymer School of Real Estate and I wanted to talk to you today about how to compute property taxes from mills. I'm amazed how many people need help with this, but this is in chapter 18 in, uh, in, the, in this textbook and here's the way this works. First off, let me tell you this, when you pay property taxes, you pay taxes to the city, you pay taxes to the county, and you pay taxes to the school board. Now, if you don't live in the city, you live outside the city in the country. You pay taxes to the county, and you pay taxes to the school board. So be careful when you read the question. Make sure the character we're talking to lives in the city. They might give you the city taxes. He doesn't even live in the city. Now, taxes are based on mills, and let me explain to you what a mill is. Everybody recognizes that as one dollar. Everybody recognizes that as ten cents or one tenth of a dollar. Everybody recognizes that as one penny or one hundredth of a dollar. Well, this is a mill. A mill is point zero zero one. It's one tenth of a penny one thousandths of a dollar and it's the way that the government tells you how much your taxes are so if you lived I'm gonna erase that if you lived in a city if you lived in a city where taxes were five mills right, that's the taxes in your city from your city government and let's say you have a vacant lot that you own in this city. This is a vacant lot, and your vacant lot has been assessed at $50,000. Now, the taxes in your county are 7.2 mills. Taxes in your county are 7.2 mills, and the taxes in your school board are 8.75 mills. By the way, the most your taxes can possibly be is 10 mills. State law does not allow the city, the county, or the school board to charge more than 10. So if you were in the most expensive county, in the most expensive city, in the most expensive school board in the state of Florida, most your taxes could be is 10, 10, and 10, or a total of 30 mills. And our example here, now, if we wanted to, we can add these up but let's don't and you'll understand why as you get into homestead. I'm not going to talk about homestead today, but you need to go into chapter 18 and make sure you understand how that works. But we're going to stick with this vacant lot that's worth $50,000. So five mills, we're going to take the decimal and we're going to move it one, two, three places over. So five mills looks like that. So point zero zero five is five mils. Seven point two mils, we're going to move the decimal one, two, three places over, and it looks like that. So we got a fifty thousand dollar vacant lot times point oh seven two. And now the eight point five mils we do the decimal one, two, three, and it looks like that. So we've got a $50,000 vacant lot in the city, in the county, in the school board, and how much are our taxes? Well, 50,000, I got my calculator, use your calculator, 50,000, that's your assessed value, times point zero zero five. My calculator says $250 to the city, and we've got 50,000, that's our assessed value, times point zero zero seven two. And my calculator says $360. And 
and then 50,000, my calculator says 50,000 times 0 .00875, and that is $437.50. $437.50. So we're going to total those up. $437 plus $360 plus $250 equals $1,047.50. And that's how you compute taxes when you have the assessed value. Now, if it's homestead property, you need to go back into your book and review that because determining the taxable value is a little more complicated than what I've put on here. And thank you very much for being with us today. By the way, if you need any help, uh, we suggest you get Linda Crawford's exam manual. You can call Kathy at that number. She'll sell it to you. She'll ship it to you. And it's got 400 practice questions in it. Uh, it's exactly what you need uh, to pass the Florida real estate exam. I assume everybody knows the pass rate. And by the way, you can go to my blog at Ron Clymer Blogspot and read last month's uh, dismal statistics 27% of the people that took the exam for the first time last month passed it. 23% of the people that took it last month for the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth time passed it. So unless you're in the upper quarter of your classmates that are taking the class with you or all the people that are taking the exam, you better be studying. There is no better study aid than Linda's exam manual. We teach a two-day review class a couple of times a month. You can call Kathy for the details on that, or you can go to our website. By the way, there's a free test on our website at Climate Real Estate School. You go take that test. If you don't pass that test, you will not be passing a Florida real estate exam. And I would urge you to go take that test on my website and see what you think. Also, if you call Kathy and get the book, Ask her how much she'd charge you to throw in a t-shirt because these t-shirts have been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt to bring good luck to people, not only, uh, not only in uh, uh, you know, real estate, but you know, taking the test, but just in everything you do, it just all kinds of luck comes to people from wearing, uh, from wearing the shirts. So thanks for being with me. If we can help you, give us a call. Thanks.